I have a plan for a new type of safe space, a space that builds people rather than tear down communities, that cultivates the motivation and independence necessary for critical thinking. I'm Justin Hitt from Inside Strategic Relations. I've drafted up a special report about this new type of safe space that I like to share with you. It's a space where people transform their existence of grievance and frustration and fear into a position of knowledge that, yes, they can achieve, yes, they can win, that collective destruction into that individual growth and strength so that they can be strong individuals for their community. Now, I illustrate this program in the context of a gym. I personally believe that gyms, churches, and pubs were shut down during COVID uh, in order to keep people from talking to each other, to disconnect people from their communities, to keep them to talk from having those leisure ideas, those self-improvement ideas, those connections of community that would cause them to challenge this situation. Now, originally COVID was thought to be much worse than it is. And we do know now that COVID has a similar death rate to the flu. It is a bit more contagious, uh, but it doesn't warrant every citizen on the planet locked in their homes, wearing a mask every second of the day. Uh, and that mask has even started to become somewhat of a political message. Now, I don't know if you agree or disagree with what I'm sharing with you today, but you will agree that this plan has value in building up individuals, helping individuals achieve and lead in their communities, and builds forward a safe space, and this is almost parody because it's not a safe space, but a space where, where we're mutually working together to grow. That's really what's desired. Now, today, a safe space is someplace where kids get to go play with Play-Doh. And if you're, you're feeling uncomfortable with the real world, you can go in there and, and just escape. That's not this kind of safe space. This particular safe space is about hard work, dedication, building and pursuing happiness, building and pursuing the strengths that are required to maintain liberty. I use the gym as a... a presentation here because mostly everybody's been to a gym or they know what a gym is and I can visually take you through the experience of a guest and I call it a protest and a safe space in order to uh, uh, allow you to understand that this is a necessary thing and this isn't a protest against others though it's a protest against your inaction it's a protest against your allowing things to happen in this world that are not beneficial to your long-term interests and to the interests around you. It builds on the principles of strategic relations, and it also demonstrates a social conditioning program that can be used to retrain minds so that individuals have good pursuits. So that also means that it could help people have bad pursuits. But ultimately, in the context of gym, we all agree that the gym is a place of health. The gym is a place of building. The gym is the place of encouragement. And sometimes it's a place of suffering. But ultimately, it is a space for growth. So you're walking down the street, you see this gym, and it says over the door, safe space, all welcome. Outside, it has a big chalkboard, a big chalkboard. It's, it's massive. It's, and it says across the top, grievances. And people have written on it, systematic racism. They've written on it, uh, discrimination. They've written on it, wealth gap. They've written on every grievance possible. Now, there's going to be two types of people. There'll be the types of people who write down the grievance, the things that they do not want, and then move on. But there'll be those types of people who who are encouraged to come inside. So there's some people around the safe space saying, come on inside. I understand you have some grievances. Leave them outside. Come inside, and we're going to help you get to the next level. Now, when you're looking in this thing, it's obviously it's a gym. There's people working out in there. There's people doing push-ups and sit-ups, and it looks like hard work. And in fact, isn't that how life is? When we look at people who are successful and we look at people who are out there, there's one or two things that are happening. When we see someone achieving their goals, we often say one or two things. One, we're jealous, we're upset, we have grievances. You know, maybe they got, maybe their mother-in-law helped them. Maybe they have a, a sister in the business, a brother in the business. Maybe they have this secret privilege that I don't have. That's most people looking in, they see only the grievances. But there are some people, and we've got to find these people who look in and they realize, they look past the grievance and they understand those people are working on their dreams. Those people are working on improving themselves. Those people are working to get to the next level. I want to go into that safe space. 
Now, it's a safe space because when you get inside the door of the gym, there you're immediately paired up with a mentor. This mentor helps you start getting through the basic exercises, the stretching, the proper posture, the lifting of weights. Now, there's going to be many that are in this first section who want to get to the next section where they see people lifting weights and using exercise bikes and you know maybe they're in spinning class and the people on the other side look much better. They're stronger. They're, they're more physically fit. They have uh, more energy. But you're over here sweating your ass off doing basic lightweights, doing basic sit-ups, doing basic stretches, doing the, the basics. Well, you know what? The basics are necessary. And some people who are in this first area are going to look outside. They're going to see the back of that grievance board that says nothing. They're going to see people walking by on the street. They might even see people leering in the window and, and saying mean things to them. But what they're going to see through the glass of the window written on this side of the glass in an in a, in a oil p- pencil is encouragement. You can achieve what you believe. All things are possible. There are, there are going to be statements on this board in, in multiple colors, multiple shapes, multiple sizes. And it's going to be looking back at them saying all the positive things. Because isn't that how it is? When you're achieving your goals, when you're moving forward, when you're moving along a path of goals you start seeing life differently. The outsiders looking in, seeing you sweat your ass off, seeing you work and seeing that frustration on your face, they've got grievances. They're like, oh, look at that privilege. Look at them reaching for the stars. Look at them setting goals. Look at them wasting their life away when everyone else is suffering. But when you're too busy learning the basics, self-responsibility, taking care of your family first, taking care of your community first, uh, is spending less than you earn. Uh, starting with the basics, lifting the small weights before you go off and try to lift the big weights. Learning how the exercise works before you go in there and tie up a machine from somebody who's ready to go. And so you're in this first chamber. You're being encouraged. On the walls are big posters of heroes, uh, of people who have gone from nothing to achieve something. Arnold Schwarzenegger, if you've read his biography, he started out regular. He made himself great. Now, he had a network of people around him, and there were certain societal characteristics that may have possibly helped him. But what about Thomas Sowell? What about Walter Williams? They had the same disadvantages that were on this grievance board yet they achieved anyway. What if those grievances outside were excuses? And when you got on the inside, you started to realize there is something you can do. That's what this first chamber is about. Now, once they graduate the first chamber, because they can see from the first chamber to the second, they see in the second chamber better looking people, stronger people, people that are hyped up and just enjoying life, that are loving it. And they see beyond those people, leisure. And so if they want to get to the next level, they got to graduate. So they need to go from the the outside world to the instruction. They need to get the lessons. They need to get the foundations. They need to set the goals. They need to accept that responsibility. And once they've done that, they can move to the next station, which is the cooperation. It's teaming up with a partner who's also going through a journey like you and working together to support each other as you mutually move towards the outcomes you desire. See, in that second chamber, there's people using different types of machines for different purposes. Some want better abs, some want better strength, some want better heart health, some want better physical endurance, some are training for marathons, some are training for weightlifting, some are into cycling, some are into martial arts. It doesn't matter. That second chamber, they're working together. They're in this cooperative effort. Now, they're also holding each other accountable. So you said you were going to do 15 reps. You've only done 10 reps. Let's knock out the other five before we go. And by the way, if you're going to do 15, why not 16? Why not 17? If you're going to do 15, why don't we break it down and go from 15 to 14 to 13 to 12 until we just we can't do it anymore? Why don't we, we put a little bit extra weight on? Why don't we take some weight off and do more reps? See, they're going to be encouraging. They're going to be educating each other. They're going to be reading the books. They're going to read the books to educate themselves. They're going to be reading about nutrition. Now, again, I'm doing this in the context of a gym, but it's the same whether it's your church, whether it's a community or fraternal organization, whether it's just your family. Are you willing 
to go past the basics. Because see, when you're, in doing, when you're in chamber one, man, you can just go out the door anytime. You can go out there and hang out with the grievances. You can go out there and hang out with the excuses. To graduate chamber one and get to chamber two, you've got to get dedicated. Now that key could be writing down your goals. Now you're in chamber two and you're working on those goals and you're moving forward and people are cooperating with each other. You're building allies. You're building uh, strategic relationships. You're waiting your turn for a piece of equipment, but you're not wasting time standing there staring at them, waiting for them to get done. You're lifting the free weights you, and you're in you're using the basics and the fundamentals that you learned in chamber one to graduate from chamber one to, to chamber two, uh, to chamber from chamber one to chamber two, to chamber three, chamber three is independence. Independence is where you go in there and now you work your mission. That's the specialty tools. That might be where the pool is. That might be where you're going to get in a sauna. That was, that's where you're going to go and you're going to just, you're going to recover from the work, but you're going to do so in a space that is away from the distractions. And when you're looking out from the the final uh, chamber, you're seeing other people's hard work and you're saying, look, come on, enjoy the pool. Come on in here and get get your reps out of the way so you can get in here and and cool off. Maybe it's the ice bath. Maybe it's the sauna. Maybe it's the uh, the massage room, uh, the steam room, the, the, uh, the dunk, the deep tanks, the, the, uh, immersion tanks. Maybe it's just sitting and relaxing and listening to music while you have a a, a smoothie or something like that. But it's that life of luxury that people believe is possible. Now, this whole space is set up in such a way so that if you're standing on the outside and you're looking in, it's like purgatory. I'll, I'll give it to you right now. It's like purgatory, but you see that growth. You see that success, um, but you don't understand it. And that's because all the success and all the encouragement is written on these glass windows. And when you're looking in, it's all backwards. It's all gibberish. But again, they have the grievances. They have the grievances and they can focus on the grievances as they want. But you know what? Don't come into this safe space if you're not willing to work on yourself, to work on yourself and move to the next level. But it's not just mental work. It is the physical work of learning the basics. It is your match with match with an instructor. You take some classes. You work on the fundamentals. You set goals. You start changing your habits. You start focusing your routine. You start working on things so that you can graduate into the next chamber, that cooperation where now you have small groups that are working together. This is a microcosm of life. When you're in that middle chamber, you don't know whether you're going to go all the way and succeed or you're going to fall backwards. But you know what? If you fall backwards, you've got the support to get back on the basics, to get back and focused. If you graduate and move forward, then you've got the the leisure. But you know what? You also realize you can't stay in the leisure all the time. You need to set that next level goal. You need to set that next level because that's going to get you back to enjoy it even more. Ultimately, what we're building here is a structure of individualism and independence that builds upon a fundamental truth in all areas of life. We all don't start out successful. No matter what someone says looking in, you earned your success and you deserve your success. But every time you go to bed at night, there's somebody out there who wants to tear it down. There's someone out there who wants to take it away. There's someone out there who wants to what you've got but is not willing to put in the work that you put in. So what do we've got to do? And this is the foundation of strategic relationships. We are building up each other for mutual gain. You're going to have to find the people who leave behind their grievances. You're going to have to carefully instruct them, carefully understand and help them build their goals. And then for those who have goals that are aligned with yours, then you're going to bring them together into cooperative relationships. Those cooperative relationships are going to mutually benefit and then move forward some of those individuals to independence. That's because not everybody's going to want to go. It's like a tree. Not everybody can climb to the top of the tree. Now, it doesn't help the person to help them up the tree because if they can't get down, they're going to get hurt. But the point is, I'm using a gym as an analogy here because we all understand. If you go to the gym regularly, if you regularly work out, if you regularly exercise, if you regularly work on your goals and your mindset, if you regularly invest in yourself, the whole world around you changes. Now, the world actually doesn't change. The world is the same. It's been for thousands of years. People who get, the only thing they got is excuses. They've never stepped off and stepped up. You're the one that steps off and steps up. Now, this model here for the safe space 
would likely scare off anybody who actually wants a safe space. If they're woke, they won't go in there because it, as soon as you go through that door, you are responsible. As soon as they go through that door, they must achieve through their own actions. There is no government to give it to them. You don't get better health, wealth, or wisdom through handouts. But you know what? For the people who do go through the door, you start building up a community. Now, again, whether it's your gym, your church, your martial arts center, your fraternal group, your community, build up these three chambers. One first of instruction. This is the way the world works. Here's the basics. Here's how you get started. You are responsible. You can make a difference. Then you move them to cooperation. Only those that graduate. Cooperation is as we can achieve, we can work together, we can help each other, but we're still responsible for our individual actions. And then finally, independence, where you have surplus, where you have wealth and prosperity, where you have that understanding of, I built this. Now, you also know that at any time you can fall back. At any time, someone else could build past you. But you know what? That You see it as encouragement. You don't see it as some grievance that you need to protest in the street for. You see it as, look, opportunity is here. I was the best. I, I was the best and I haven't, I've lost the edge. What do I got to do to get back in track? And then through ethics, you start getting back on track. You could go back and mentor folks in the instructional area. You could, you could go back to the cooperative area and start building up again. But again, it's a simple model. I use a gym as an analogy. I hope this has helped you. In fact, I've written a whole special report on this particular system. And I also went through the psychological and the uh, conditioning elements of this if you were going to implement it in a practical environment. It's kind of like the boot camp, uh, private service, and then uh, officer school that you might see in the military. This is a very standard model that works great. The key is individual responsibility personal liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those things are foundational to individuals being strong and communities being stronger. I want to thank you for listening today. I'm Justin Hitt with Sustainable. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. I'm here to help high-income professionals and entrepreneurs achieve more and create more and gain leadership, power, and control through ethically implemented strategic relations principles. Again, if you have any questions about this or any other program, we've talked about the new safe space, a safe space that that builds up people rather than tear them down, a a place that creates adults rather than the continuation of childhood behaviors. If you've got questions about this or anything else, you visit www.insidestrategicrelations.com. Thanks for listening.